See how the Antarctic Peninsula looks just like South America, but upside down? This isn't just a coincidence. It's the ghost of a 30 million year old breakup. These continents were once connected, but their divorce gave birth to an ocean current so powerful, it was capable of completely freezing Antarctica and shaping its landscape. Here's how it went down. Tectonic plates pulled a sneaky move and cracked open a ridiculously narrow passage in the ocean, about only 500 miles wide, forcing 4.5 trillion cubic feet of water to flow inside this geological straw. This was the birth of an ocean current stronger than the Amazon River. This ocean current, called the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, by the way, flows in a circular motion, going clockwise because of the strong winds that blow over there. This circular motion around Antarctica caused erosion, shaping the landmass of the continent into a circle, except for that stubborn peninsula, which is being slowly dragged east like a kid refusing to leave a playground. Wait, South America and Antarctica used to be one? Yep, a long time ago. South America, Australia, and Antarctica were all part of a supercontinent called Gondwana, which also included Africa at some point. Back then, South America and Antarctica used to be basically joined at the hip by a land bridge called the Antarctic Land Bridge, which just so happened to be a lush green forest and also a great dinosaur highway. Yeah, you heard it right, dinosaurs. Hmm. A 95 million year old dino, whose name I can't pronounce, sorry, was discovered in Australia, and scientists found out it had actually been a distant cousin of Argentina's Sarmientosaurus. Same jaw, same chiseled teeth, same everything. These guys were like identical twins, separated by an ocean. How? Because back then, Antarctica wasn't a frozen wasteland. It was a temperate rainforest, like Oregon making it a pretty nice travel route for a dino family. But the land bridge wasn't just for dinosaurs. About 40 million years ago, the ancestors of Australia's marsupials waddled to the land down under all the way from South America, taking the Antarctica route, hmm. another proof that these continents used to be connected. Things remained somewhat peaceful for the dinos and the marsupials until Earth's ground started moving. This is what a German scientist called the Continental Drift Theory, back in 1912. Our German friend here basically looked at the coast of South America and went, hey, this looks like it could fit into the coast of Africa. Like a scientific Sherlock Holmes, he noticed what others had overlooked for centuries. The continents were clearly pieces of a larger puzzle. And he was right. Here's the deal. Planet Earth is made of many layers of rocks and metals, like a cosmic onion. The outermost layer, the lithosphere, is divided into pretty solid tectonic plates that move atop a layer of softer, somewhat molten rocks, like slippery ice. This is why the plates move. In fact, they've been rearranging Earth's face for billions of years, with supercontinents forming and breaking apart in cycles, like a slow-motion game of bumper cars. This movement might be pretty slow since most tectonic plates only move 0 to 3.9 inches every year, except for the Nazca plate, racing ahead at 7.8 inches, about as fast as your hair grows. But don't let their snail's pace fool you. These shifting slabs are the ultimate planet shapers. Their slow dance gives us everything from earthquakes that build mountains like the Himalayas to rifts that birth oceans like the Atlantic all because the oceanic crust is dense and sinks like a stone, while continental crust floats like a cork. It's this density difference that explains why continents exist at all. Without it, Earth would be completely covered by shallow seas. This slow motion planetary renovation project is exactly what tore South America and Antarctica apart 30 million years ago. The plates under these continents started to drift apart in a process called crustal extension. It's like the lithosphere was pizza dough being slowly stretched until it thins and splits. As the crust stretched, it became thinner and weaker, eventually cracking like the surface of a drying lake bed. This whole thing gave birth to a new tectonic plate, the Scotia Plate, that emerged between South America and Antarctica, like a geological divorce lawyer. For a while, parts of this plate stayed above water as the last gasp of the Antarctic land bridge. 
It was Earth's version of that one thread still connecting your hoodie after the zipper breaks. These final connections might have persisted as chains of islands, but just like that fraying hoodie, the connection couldn't last forever. Eventually, this small but mighty plate became the final nail in the coffin of the land bridge connecting the two continents. Just like all the tectonic plates, this one was also on the move. As it expanded eastward, it opened a new passage of water called the Drake Passage, slowly covering the Antarctic land bridge with ocean water. The process was like pulling open elevator doors, at first just a crack, then wider and wider until the connection was completely broken. This geographical divorce had chilling consequences. The new Drake Passage allowed the Antarctic circumpolar current to form, creating an endless loop of cold water that isolated Antarctica, shaped its land, and even cooled the entire planet. This current acts like a wall around Antarctica, blocking warm water and invasive species while regulating global climate. Eventually, Antarctica turned into an ice box that is 98% covered in ice sheets, and that holds about 61% of Earth's fresh water. Nowadays, this continent holds the title of the windiest, driest, and iciest place on Earth. It's a frozen desert where temperatures plunge below negative 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit, cold enough to freeze your breath mid-air. A layer of ice there can be more than a mile thick, and it expands even further in winter to cover an area larger than the continental United States. Today, if you want to travel to Antarctica, the quickest sea route is through the Drake Passage, a 500-mile wide body of water that is narrow enough for the winds to scream across thousands of miles, transforming into monstrous waves that can tower up to 49 feet, though calm days create waves only 13 to 16 feet high, still twice as tall as Atlantic waves, mind you. This is probably why sailors call this stretch of ocean the Drake Shake. But tectonic movement isn't just about shifting continents, it's Earth's ultimate life support system. You see, about half of our planet's heat comes from radioactive decay in the core. Thanks, uranium-235! Something like nature's nuclear reactor. This heat is behind everything from volcanoes to the very plate motion that once connected Antarctica to South America. And it only comes out of the core because of tectonic movement. Without this internal heat engine, Earth would be just like Mars. When the plates move and release heat, they also release CO2 gases into the atmosphere, regulating the temperature of our planet. And when the plates move underwater, they take a lot of this CO2 back to Earth's interior, recycling all this gas. This is why the plates can change our air, climate, and even the evolution of life itself just by moving around. But billions of years ago, these plates were not moving around. Back then, it was like Earth was wearing a solid ceramic shell with many cracks. But even without tectonic movement, the heat managed to escape through these cracks in a process called stagnant lid tectonics, kickstarting all life on Earth. And no, tectonic movement is not a thing of the past. Earthquakes are the living proof that it is not just happening today but might repeat again on a more dramatic scale in the future. You see, to form supercontinents like Pangaea, smaller megacontinents have to dive beneath another. And scientists predict that a similar process might create a new supercontinent called Pangaea Proxima in 250 million years. By then, humans might be extinct or living on Mars, but Earth's tectonic dance will continue even without us. Not bad for something that moves more slowly than a traffic jam. Turns out, Antarctica and South America used to be BFFs before mm. all that tectonic drama split them up, like a messy breakup that literally froze one of them out. Now, they just awkwardly mirror each other from across the Drake Passage. Classic exes. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.